I'm still trying to learn about sun angles and shadows and things. So, I'm making a very short note. For me, that could go on for 10 minutes, I guess. But I finally figured out how I'm going to top out this panel. A lot of times, uh, I, I even have the wrong stuff. I mean, I bought stuff that was supposed to fit with corrugated roofing or something, but it doesn't. To actually be... Uh, you might think that this... Thank you, Scooter. That actually would fit corrugated iron roofing, but no, it only fits corrugated uh, plastic panels or something. So when I built this thing, I my for a heat exchange panel, they really have to have metal. So it will. You should have something that has a high thermal conductivity, and for me, that's metal and. The, most inexpensive thing I could always find when I made panels like this was corrugated iron roofing. But apparently, I don't have the right um, corrugation type to totally finish the panel. But what I do have is enough of the stuff built for this polycarbonate panel on top. And even with dust on it, it's returning more than I'm using. So basically, I'm going to finish this thing off by, because I have to pull it together and caulk it. I'm going to use caulking underneath the edges of the polycarbonate. And then what I'm going to do is, I will glue into position with silicon rubber or something. The spacers that you can see through the polycarbonate that are on the bottom of the panel. Then, at matching points, or maybe only a few points or half the points, I'm going to put those things you see now, which were the ones I had left, so that when I put a topping piece of wood to pull the, the lips of this enclosure together and make it all one piece, it's going to really protect the polycarbonate on both sides. So I'm, I'm going to have at least two more. I'm going to space them out in a way, and the ones under and over are going to match up the metal reinforcing bands, which are difficult to see at this point, but they are on some other pictures and videos, well, they're not as important as matching up what holds this upper polycarbonate in place. And I will not caulk the seams between where the top panels go down, because I want runoff to be able to leak through and, and wash off to do that. They'll only be called for position underneath and then held in place. But this is actually working and it's keeping the spa at about an 85 degree ambient with cloudy weather running from 9 to 3. And I do believe, and with the normal decline of the spa when it's unheated, and it's the third day that the spa heater, filter, and heater have been turned off and it's still it's still holding in there it's warm enough if, if I can be in the mid 80s I can take a shower and I did discover something today that I do want to make a video note of then I'm going to take some pictures but when the pump is running and several times the hose is knocked off and I now discover just use Use adaptive hose barbs, use the right stuff, it's very inexpensive, and it will not pop off. Just, you know, when I improvise, it's for an experiment, and then if something doesn't work two times in a row and it's simple, I just now understand, I just have to fix it. So, the only thing left here is to find a very small leak in one of the joints here which results in some dripping from the corner when it's running. But I did, uh, I did discover that if you want to take a shower with this system, don't start showering right away. Because unlike running out of hot water from a hot water heater, if you notice, there's like a, there's a 50 foot flexible hose. And I, I will now guarantee you, because I did an experiment, is that you do not want to take a shower with the water that's in that hose. 
even if the hose were completely uh, uh, a potable water hose and approved, it would still have a problem because it's cold and it's like 67 degrees right now, the wind's like blowing, it's really getting inclement. That hose, and I now, of course I understand that, but I didn't understand it from a practical sense. I hadn't experienced it, and that's the whole thing about model making and testing, is it's real world. That hose is filled with ambient temperature water. So, in a survival situation, when this system is used, if you want to flush a toilet, use the water that's in the hose. Don't try to take a shower. Once you've used up the water that's in that hose and the hose starts to warm up and you start to get warm water, then shut that off. Wait a minute, take a shower. On a really hot day, I now understand that that hose looks perfectly innocent, but it could scald you because if that hose is sitting in the sun and it gets up to 140 degrees and somebody innocently steps into the shower and turns it on and they get sprayed even momentarily with 140 degree water, that's not acceptable. And so that's what consumer affairs, protection, and good product design are all about. The only thing about this project is uh, I want to keep that in mind, but at the same time, when the grid goes down, and it went down here in 1994, you, you could be without any kind of services for a long time. And so now I'm learning, and at some point, for instance, the diverter hose will be kept in an insulated sort of area or not in direct sunlight or something like that in the shower cabana so you can drag it out so it'll still mean that if you want to take a shower on a really cold day you can take a really cold shower but you can also use that to fill up toilets at need or do other fill up a washing machine or something then you can divert your storage tank hot water into doing other stuff like taking a shower. I'm discovering for instance that and this is important because the sun's not down I don't know on the albedo panel I do realize that I may have trouble here in a temperate zone actually cooling something down enough to be acceptable by FDA standards but in other areas of the planet, if you were on a polar region, having a refrigerator sounds, oh, easy, we'll just put stuff outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but if you're ever gone hiking, you know that Mr. Bear and Mr. Squirrel both love to eat human food, whether it's good for them or not. So, if you, or if you put stuff outside and it's really, really cold, then you can't even eat it because it's cold and there's it takes hours to warm it up even to eat it it's like people who think how could I uh, not have enough water to drink if I'm surrounded by snow well you can't drink snow and you got to warm it up and it takes a certain amount of energy whether you make tea out of it or you you simply uh, heat yourself up and then eat snow cones or something I don't know Bottom line is, this diverter hose could be a double danger depending on where it is. And so my refrigeration experiment is interesting because if I was in an insulated environment in the coldest place on the planet Earth, then it's not that easy to have a refrigerator. You basically have to put your food into a place that you want to be 20 to 40 degrees cooler than what you're living in but meanwhile it's like blisteringly cold outside so the only refrigerator would be like a heavily insulated box in your warm environment you're living in and then some kind of just like double heat exchanger coils where it just goes outside and gets like freezing and comes back in and a thermostat and that's not what I'm dealing with here because in a temperate zone 
my barrel wants to stay at 60. I mean, that's like the only cold place I have is the northern sky here. And there's a lot of nights with a lot of clouds. It just doesn't get that cold. So I'm having to make some adjustments on this and I have to decide about some safety issues. But for the first time, I really feel this panel can be finished off for the first time. And I really think that I can make a controller that really will optimize the panel's return and I will never have to pay for electrical energy to heat this spa again. And hopefully it'll be part of a survival system that could even be a retirement cottage or mountain cabin or hunting lodge kind of thing where no matter when you go, as long as you can get there, you can live in a civilized manner and be absolutely in compatibility with what the planet needs.